I've just been lucky enough to spend an hour interviewing Harry Redknapp over on our Patreon channel. And yes, you've guessed it, we've chopped up a 10 minute segment, which we're gonna share with you here. Now, the reason I've chosen this particular 10 minute segment is because I think it ties in quite nicely with something that we were discussing on this channel as recently as last week. And it was when that story about Harrison Ashby came out that he wasn't gonna sign the new deal, that he wanted to leave. and. There was a lot of a debate about whether it was for money, but I, I was sort of arguing, well, because it's happened with Perkins as well, and I, I find it hard to believe that Leeds have got more money than West Ham. I just don't think they do. And when we look at Ngakia as well, I think it's a path to first-team football. And what I discussed with Harry was really about the importance of leaving that route open, leaving that pathway open. But not just that, Harry was at pains to sort of stress the importance of I guess to have a, what a better word, my word, not his, schmooze the parents. Because when you're a parent of a young player, you want to know that, you're, that your, your child is going to get that path to first-team football. And I think, obviously, there will be a few parents who is all about money, but most of them are just going to want what's best for their kids. And if what you have is a club who have got a reputation for putting players in the first team, then obviously you're going to go with them. And, and Harry made a really great point in the interview about actually having players present when the manager is also looking. Uh, so there's a great little bit in there. And actually it actually ties in really quite nicely with something I discussed with Tony Carr, which was, well, you know what, you're going you're to hear it in the, in the section that I discussed with Harry anyway. Uh, if you would like to see more and hear more of that interview, then you need to join us on Patreon. Uh, what's Patreon? It's basically a way that you can support Hammers Chat. It's basically a, a subscription service. We've got two channels. We've got this forum channel and we've got the main Hammers Chat channel. We've got a third channel. It's our Patreon channel. And each month we interview a special guest. Last month it was Tony Cotty. Uh, next month we've got a Premier League referee. We've got Ian Bishop coming up. We've had Tony Carr on it. Honestly, loads and loads of inter interviews. We've also got a Jack from Hammerlytics and, and Analytics United on there. There's loads and loads of additional stuff. But the main reason for joining Hammers Chat Patreon is so as you can support us and help us do this as our full-time job, which is exactly why I can sit here on a Friday afternoon, which is when I'm recording this video, by the way, and interview Harry Redknapp, which I thoroughly enjoy doing. Anyway, without further ado, there's some really interesting stuff here from what Harry says about Joe Cole, um, about how he got Joe Cole to West Ham and, and removed him from the clutches of Alec Ferguson, and, and how maybe something we could possibly, my words, not Harry's, but how West Ham could possibly maybe do a little bit better at retaining some of these young players who we seem to have such high hopes for. Oh, uh, the best schoolboy football I've ever seen was Joe Cole. And, uh, Joe was a genius. He came, he was unbelievable. At 11 years of age, I'd never seen a kid could play football like Joe. It was ridiculous how good he was. You know, I remember the first day that we got him down to playing a game, we played Norwich at, at Chabal Heath at the training ground. It was raining, it was ankle deep mud. And we're going out at two o'clock to watch the kids play. Uh, and I'm walking out to a training pitch with Alan Seeley. Bless him, Alan. He scored the two goals in the Cup Winners, European Cup Winners Cup final. Peter Braybrook, absolute incredible player, Peter, has um, worked with the kids for me. Just a great guy. Peter Braybrook has been one of my all time favourite people. Frank was there, Roger Crook, little group of us are walking out. And after about 10 minutes, we all stood there getting soaked in wet and whatever. And we've gone, who is this kid? It was like, they went, well, he's only 11. The others, you know, he's playing under 30. He's playing like two years out of his age group. Of, and he was doing things. I'd never seen anything like it. It was ridiculous. Ridiculous. The skill and the ability to beat people. And every Sunday, I used to go and watch the, the kids play over at Chad Relief. We'd play Arsenal. If Joe played, we'd win 2-0. Two, two Joe would get both goals. Play Tottenham. Whoever we played, we'd beat them if Joe played. Because he was that good. He was on another level to any kid. Man United, Alex Ferguson sending him a shirt. Joe, this is your shirt when you come to Old Trafford. Number 10, Cole, sent him a shirt. Took him on the coach to the cup final. Alex Ferguson with Man United. Liverpool, everybody. Hold everybody on, hold on. Sorry, him. he was at West Ham and Alec Ferguson took him on the coach to the cup final. Yeah, he was, yeah. Joe was with us, but... Yeah, you know, even after he signed schoolboy forms, his dad, George, was a great guy, George. 
real character, you know, you didn't mess with George. This video is sponsored by the One Football app, which you can download by clicking the link underneath this screen. Why would you download the One Football app? Well, the One Football app is the best football app you can possibly download. There's no other football app worthy of being downloaded to your device in terms of news, transfer gossip, injuries, fixture list, anything you want to know about West Ham is there. Why? Well, because it goes searching through all of the newspapers so you don't have to go flicking your way through them and it'll search the internet so you don't have to go clicking on your little mouse. It will search all the Premier League websites. It picks all the West Ham news, put it into one place because when you sign up and it is free, you tell it that you're a West Ham fan and that's the news you want. So check it out. It's the One Football app. Click the link below. They'll know you've come from Hammers Chat. Check it out. An excellent, excellent app. Um, and But, you know, it was one of them. It was like we had to have this softly, softly approach because everybody, Arsenal, everybody was trying to get him. Everybody. He was the best by miles. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, if I'd have said that Joe's, George or something, Harry's going up to Old Trafford for a week training. If I'd have said, no, he can't go, George. He belongs here. He's signed schoolboy forms, mate. I'm sorry. He's against the rules. George would have said, oh, OK, give us that paper. Bosh. Last year. That's the end of it. He said, no, he look, he loves it here. He wants to go have a look round, have a week up there. He knows he's very happy here. We ain't got a problem, all right? But he wants to go and have a... Yeah, no problem, George, you know, and that's how we had to play it. And and it worked. In the end, we, we got him because of, the I think, the way we handled it from the age of 11, when every club in England was chasing him. And I think if I'd have played hardball with George, it wouldn't have worked. He'd have just said, no, sorry, he wants to go up and have it. If you don't like it, unlucky, forget it. And that's what he would have done. So... Um, and you know, he only had he had he just felt it would be good for George. And he went on the coach, the cup final, everything, Joe, uh, Joe with Man United. And they say he had the shirt number 10, but no, he always came back. He loved it at West Ham, he felt that was his club where he wanted to play. Um, and everybody, we all loved him. So, and he's a great lad, and he's just top class. He was a fantastic young player, great player, and, and a smashing bloke. I just loved Joe. Well, how important is that, Harry? Because I'm just thinking about what you said there. So he's gone up. His dad, George, has taken him up to Old Trafford. <laughs> They've had a little look. But what brings him back to West Ham? And I guess what I want to know is how important is that those youth players see that path into the first team in terms oh. of encouragement? And Because uh, I guess he would have earned more money at Old Trafford. Yeah, listen, what's changed in football? Let me tell you the biggest change. Managers back in the day, Ron Greenwood... Every single youth game, there was never a game where Tuesday night Upton Park, Southern Junior Floodlight Cup, London Youth Cup, FA Youth Cup. He would be there. The parents of the kids that were there, the parents of the kids they're trying to get who are younger would be there. He would talk to everybody in the book. That's what he did. That's why West Ham, it was a conveyor belt of young players coming. He never missed a youth game, Ron Greenwood. And and, he, and that's what made it. That's how we kept getting there, all these kids. Every year, kids come out the youth team. They saw it as a path to come here, come to West Ham. You'll get a chance to play. You'll learn the right way. You'll learn about the game. You, uh, you, you know, it just now, and not West Ham. I'm, I'm not talking about David Moyes or anybody. But yeah. 90, f managers now don't do that much now. They, you know, I used to go. Every Saturday morning when the first team was at home, I would go to Chabu Leaf and watch the youth team. I'd watch the first half, 15 minutes of the second half, jump in my car, Upton Park, a couple of hours, two and a half hours for the first team game. But I'd always go and have an hour of watching the kids, meet, see the parents, they see you there. Yeah. They know that you're interested. They think, hang on, the managers at the club, it's great for the kids. They, it gives them a lift, knowing that I'm interested in them. Now... I don't think you see that many managers going to watch youth games or going to watch kids or taking a big interest in them. And the big thing was they used, we used to all train on the same ground. The youth team would be over there with Tony Carr, the kids, and it, on that pitch is over there. The first team would be here, and then suddenly you might have a practice match. With them, and Tony, send me two over, and he'd send two of the kids. So they'd come and train with the first team that day or whatever, make the numbers and... That was how it was. Now they train for they train at a different place, and you know all, I'm talking about all clubs. I'm not talking about West Ham. I'm talking about all clubs. Yeah. And the managers now, I don't think they they take the same. Alex Ferguson knew every kid 
at Man United. He knew every kid in the area. He knew every... You'd go up and I'd sit and talk to him and say, we've got a kid here called Ravel Morrison. Harry, he said he's the best I've seen. He is a genius. And, you know, Ravel was a genius. He yeah. didn't, he's not had the career that he should have had with that ability because he could he play. I, I ended up taking him and I, I managed him for a while. I know he came to West Ham and he had little spells here. I remember watching him against Tottenham one night when you went to West Ham, went to Tottenham and beat Spurs. Yeah. And he just, I remember watching it on TV and he just was fantastic. Ravel was, but Alex knew all them. He knew every kid. That's what he did. He took interest in the kids. He knew every young player and and, and that's what you did back in them days You because you wanted you produce your own players. Now, I think that's gone out of the game. I don't know how many of the foreign managers now really David Moyes might do because he's old school. A lot of the managers now, most of them, the foreign managers come in, they wouldn't go and watch the youth team. They wouldn't, you know, very rarely would they take any interest in them, really. Well, and to be fair, we've spoken to Tony Carr here and he told exactly that story. He, he said when we interviewed him, he said Harry would, would often say, oh, you know, Tony, oh, I'm a bit short today. I need a midfielder. I need a left back or whatever. And he'd chuck them over and the lift and the buzz that that would give to the, the young oh, players yeah, yeah. was uh, was something else. Yeah, so we covered that, Gio. What he does want to know is, um, by the way, he wants to know, is Zamora good enough for West Ham? He's a Bournemouth player, right? Very good player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the left back. I like him. I like him. He could be like the boy who's gone. He's a bit like the boy who's gone to Chelsea from Brighton. Yeah. You know, energy, pace. He bombs forward. I like him. He's a, he's, he's a real, I think he's a real talent. Yeah, I do like him. And he, when he plays with the boy Anthony in front of him, down that left side, they're very, very dangerous. Uh, but yeah, no, I think he is a player who could definitely go on. Um, it's the one that Eddie Howell's not looking at him carefully. Eddie, Eddie would know about him from yeah. you know his contacts here and everything. So, but yeah, I think he's a player that he'd be a good player for West Ham for sure. A massive thank you to Harry Redknapp there. I thoroughly enjoyed doing that interview. If you'd like to see more of that interview and more of the interviews we've got coming up in the future, then please do join us over on our Patreon site. You can use the link underneath this video. It's patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. Check it out. There's three different tiers and ways that you can subscribe and support us. And also you get some really generous discounts in our online store.